Elephant's Line. This time, let's create a web concept using this cute bee character, who has some pretty fun interactions. We will teach you how to make this looping effect animation of its wings, to how to create transition effect where elements appear like this when you're clicking buttons. It will be super simple and it's something you can easily embed into a website. All right, let's get started. The first thing we're going to take a look at is how to create this looping wing animation. There's a link to the completed B down below. <laughs> Sorry for the pun. So if you want, you can follow along as we go. Now, the first thing we want to do is move the pivot point. We want to do this so the wing moves from the part where it meets the body and not from the middle of the wing. We can do this by creating a new group, so Command G, and then we can click on this group while holding Option. And now we can move the position of this pivot point to the bottom of the wing like this, and adjust the rotation. And as you can see, it's moving as if the bee's flapping its wing. Let's duplicate this wing and move it to the other side. And to do this, just hit Command D, to adjust my rotation. All right, now let's use this wing to create the animation. So what we need to do is select our wing and create a new state and adjust the rotation of the wing. We do not want to modify the position. We just want to affect the rotation. So make sure you are not moving the position of the wing. All right, it's looking pretty good. And now I want this wing animation to start as soon as the scene loads. So what we can do is use the start event. And here I added my transition and for the state, I'm going to adjust the time so we really get that fast moving B wing action. So here I'm going to use 0.10 seconds and I'm going to keep it on linear because we don't need any ease in or ease out. We just want it to be a straight motion. And to ensure that my animation is a loop, all we have to do is adjust it here in the sequence, click on loop and select infinite, and then select cycle ping pong. All right, now we can copy and paste this event and add it to our other wing. Make sure to select the correct wing in the target here. All right, now we have this nice looping animation. Another thing that we can do to bring this character even more to life is having it blink. So what we can do is select one eye and create a second state. In the second state, let's make the eye smaller. So now we have one state where the eye appears open and another where it appears closed. Now create a starter event and add a new action. In transition, you can use 0.10 for the speed, and let's keep it on linear. In sequence, let's adjust the delay to three, and then in delay replay, make sure to select start. Now for the loop, let's set that to infinite, and select ping pong reverse for the cycle. All right, we're done. Then all we have to do now is duplicate the same event for the other eye to ensure that they both have the same animation, making sure that we're setting our targets to the correct eye. And for a nice little extra tip, you can also group all of the elements of our B character and apply a follow event to that group. So in addition to the animation of our wings flapping, you can also have the bee follow our cursor, which is a really nice extra touch. Now we are going to create a transition effect. We are going to have these objects move in our frame every time that we click on this button. But first, we want to make sure our bee character is all grouped together. So it's animated wings and other elements move as one as we create this transition. So clicking on our bee, I'm going to create a new state and move our bee friend to another position and rotation in our scene. Okay, now we wanna activate this movement that we just created. To do this, let's click on the button and I'm going to add a mouse down event.
With our button still selected, let's create a new transition. And in target, let's make sure to select our V. Now, if we go to play mode, when clicking on the button, as you can see, our B is moving downward. Now the mode here is set to once, so this is why if our B is going to perform this downward movement once. But if we want to for the B to go up and repeat this action, all we have to do is change the option here to toggle. Another idea here to kind of gamify our bees, we can have some buttons that, that control the bees movement from going up or down, or you can make this character just simply rotate when clicking a button like this. There's a lot of different creative and fun ways to use this event. Now let's imagine that in addition to our bee moving, we have some other elements appear in the scene. Something like these beautiful flowers. So with our flower group selected here, let's create a new state. In the first state of our flowers is we want to move them out of frame and hide them from our scene. We can do this by moving them down or to one side. Now when my bee is in the next position, this is when I want the flowers to appear. So in the second state of my flowers, I'm going to move them like this. Now I want this action to occur when we click on the same button. Let's go to the mouse down event that we created before in this button. Here we see the transition that I added before the bee. Let's add a transition for the flowers too. Let's make sure to select the correct target of the flowers here. And make sure to select the correct states. So the base state and then the state. And now when clicking on this button, not only will our bee move, but it's as if the bee is moving to the flowers. And let's quickly change once to toggle. Let's play a little with the position and rotation here just to create a different example. I'm going to rotate and move this a little bit like this. Okay, maybe that's not the best view. Okay, that's better. Now let's try to make the flowers appear from below instead of from the side, because I think that will look a little better. Just gonna select my flower group here and then just adjust the position. All right, nice, I think that looks great. Here you can see an example where I added more buttons and more flowers because I want each one of them to appear differently when I press a specific button. It looks more complex, but you just have to repeat the same process. So this is how it looks in the base state and state. Now I'm going to click on the button that I want to trigger this action. And I create a mouse down event here and in target, make sure to select the B. Now setting the base state in the state as we did before, let's check the preview here. Okay, cool. Now I want in addition to the B, this transition of white flowers to also occur when I click the same button. So both of these things are happening at the same time. I'm going to copy and paste this transition and in target here, let's make sure we pick our white flower group this time. Now when I click, not only is the bee on the move, but so are the flowers. Now I want to make sure that if I click on the first button again after clicking on the second one, my flowers will reappear. So I go back into the mouse down event on the first button and I'm going to add a new transition by selecting my white flowers as the target in my states. I'll put the first one on current and the second one on base state. By doing this, we're just ensuring that the current state in which our objects can be found 
it will return to the corresponding base state that we want to see. So now in addition to these white flowers, let's add some more color with these pink flowers and we'll have them appear once the white ones leave the composition. So what we got to do is in the base state of these pink flowers, I'm going to hide them outside of our frame like we did before by moving them down. And then in state, I'm going to position them with our B. Just like we did before, we're just simply repeating that process. Now selecting the button that is going to trigger the movement of the pink flowers, I'm going to select the mouse down event. And you guessed it, let's add a new transition for the pink flowers. Now I click on this button and my flowers move and the pink ones appear. But obviously I don't want them to stay there if I click on the button for the white flowers. So going to my first button, I'm going to click on the mouse down event and add a new transition for the pink flowers this time. So we want to make sure that current is first and I'm going to select base state which is the state where our flowers are hidden. So this button here is triggering the pink flowers as they come into the scene where this button here is triggering the flowers to leave the scene. All right, let's repeat the same thing by adding that transition for the pink and yellow flowers on the third button and setting that to current and to base state to ensure they return to their initial position. And to demonstrate, if we zoom out a little bit, this is what our transition would look like. I made this version. It has a bit of a different layout, but this is the version that I want to add to the website. This is linked in the description below as well if you want to check this out. Before exporting, let's create a new camera. We can do this by clicking on the plus icon here and selecting camera. We want to do this to ensure that this composition is the composition that we see on our website. So how we can do this is selecting our camera, we can simply move it using our mouse on our scene and get our position just right. So I'm liking the composition, I'm liking how everything's framed. So now what I can do is lock the camera to ensure it doesn't move and also go over to the viewport here and select my camera. So now that my camera is selected, once we export this scene to a website, this is how we're going to view the scene. Let's add this to our website. So open up the export panel here and let's select Spline Viewer. In the play settings, I just wanna make sure to have the right camera selected here. Okay, great. And let's head over here to disable orbit, pan, and zoom. Since we don't want people to be moving or rotating the camera, but we just want them to be in our fixed composition as they interact with the scene. And now we can click on update viewer. And once that is done loading, let's copy the embed here. I have this template ready to go here in Framer where I've just laid out some text. Let's go up here to the top where it says insert. And as you can see the embed, let's click and drag that onto our canvas. And now I'm going to select HTML and paste our Spline Viewer embed. And that's it. Our interactive scene is loaded and embedded onto our site. We'd love to encourage you to take what you've learned from this video and make your own version. And we'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye.